What's up, guys? Um, we should be live on YouTube. Looks like everything is working smoothly on my end. I uh, am glad to be on here tonight doing this live stream. Let's just double check on the phone, make sure that everything is running smoothly. And I hear it, so it's working. Let's check. I've got audio, so we are good. So, uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, we got some questions here, and let's see what we got. Yeah, so we had, a, had quite a few questions. We're going to get to some of them tonight and uh, have a little fun. First, let's see. Let's move this over here. Well, I can't see that on there, so that's kind of a bummer. I can't see what's actually happening, but... Funky Jam, the Husey style. What's up, Barry? Um, so, Barry, the, 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 the fun part about this is getting all the stuff set up the right way. Uh, we're using OBS tonight, which is a great software. And um, it's really cool because you can do a lot of cool stuff in this software. And so um, we're here today. We're streaming. The before screen did really good. So... Um, Jumping right in, you know what we should do real quick though. Let's do a little Instagram saying that we are in fact live. What's up guys? So we are live on YouTube currently. Where's the live button? 
We're live, so join us. Okay, perfect. So, yeah, so going to um, some of the questions. It was fun getting all this stuff set up. I didn't know how it was going to turn out, and I uh, just wanted to make sure that everything was going smoothly. And it looks like how it's going to turn out. things are going very smoothly. So I want to go ahead and jump right into the questions that we got for tonight. So the first question is from Barry in the comments section, and he does have... Um, what is your opinion on wearing an Oxford cloth button down, which is a dress shirt, a uh, very popular casual dress shirt. And then, uh, we also have, he wants to know, can you wear that shirt with a jacket or sports coat, a double breasted jacket or sports coat? So Barry, that's a great question. I think if you want to wear an Oxford cloth button down dress shirt with a double breasted jacket, you are allowed to do so because... This is style and it's up for interpretation and you can really express yourself any way you want to. And so that's why, you know, I'm going to tell you to go ahead and do that. One thing I do recommend though is when you do wear a, uh, a button down Oxford, make sure that the points are long enough to where your collar has like a little bit of a roll to it in a way. You don't want to just have the really short collars. You want to make sure that the collar stands up and you want to make sure that it has a, a really good shape to it so that it kind of curves around like this one is doing today, but this is just a regular dress shirt collar. Um, and then with your collars, with your shirts that you're wearing, make sure that you do in fact have uh, long enough collars, even if you're not doing the Oxford cloth button down, because you want to make sure that those stay underneath your jacket when you're wearing them. There was a picture recently of President Obama from a few days ago actually and he was wearing a dress shirt and the collar points were like just well this shirt won't even do it but they were hanging out like this and he looked very ridiculous and someone in his camp should have told him that hey when you wear a dress shirt you make sure that the collars stay underneath the jacket and so uh, that's the first question we've got here so funky jam yeah the music in the beginning was nice uh, style over 60 what is up we're getting some people in here slowly but surely. Um, yeah, I think we're going to be doing these live streams every week because it's fun. It's a great way for me to interact with you guys and answer your style questions, I think. Uh, we're going to test different days and see what the best days are for live streaming. But I wanted to do this on a Friday just to kind of wrap up the week. And so um, everything is looking pretty cool on my end. So... Another question we got here is from Maurice, and he says, what's your take on jet suit jackets that have belts? It's a new fashion trend. So, Maurice, um, that is a really good question. Um, in my opinion, I think that I like those jackets, to be honest with you. I think they look really cool. Um, having that belt kind of going around the jacket I think is a cool thing. It's something that I wouldn't necessarily wear because I just don't know, you know, how comfortable I'd be wearing that and I think it might look a little bit weird, but it's a cool trend and I think if you your jacket is tailored, I think if the cut of it's right, I think it's a really good look. So I definitely like the way that those look, uh, but I, I won't be trying them anytime soon because I don't know how versatile that style actually is and I like to buy stuff that I can wear a whole lot and so that's uh, just a little bit about that. So uh, next question we got here is from JD over on Instagram and he says what is your favorite style of suit? One button, two button, three, three roll two or double breasted jacket? So um, in my opinion and let me just go back on here real quick and check make sure this is going smoothly let's see gent style on here real quick and it is so why am i not seeing you guys' comments okay there we go um just got those in so okay so jd uh, back to his question he was asking what's my favorite kind of suit cut and so um this so uh going back to his question I don't own any one button jackets. I think two button jackets are great. They're basic. They're going to work for most guys. Um, three roll twos, I personally, that's my favorite. I'm actually wearing a three roll two today. And this jacket, um, this is actually from the Bespoke Initiative guys. They did the whole suit. So this is like the, uh, 
the, the waistband on it. I gave them some really specific asks with this suit, and they delivered and came through. So uh, the jacket is really nice. I love the, the shape of the jacket, the taper. The sleeve length, I think, is perfect. The arms are very slim, but I think they're good. I'll probably, in the next suit, we'll do a, a little bit of a wider arm sleeve. But I think the shape of the jacket is absolutely perfect. There's not a lot of extra fabric, which is something that I like. So I think they did really good on this. And then the pants, I did a higher cut on the trousers. We did side tabs, no pleats, but they have kind of a little bitty pleat right there. And then down at the bottom, I have a two inch cuff. So that is the suit that I'm wearing today. But the jacket is a three roll two. And I think that a three roll two is the best type of jacket in my opinion. I think it just looks a lot better than you know, a two button or a one button. One buttons are usually reserved for more like formal style. So I really don't say to wear a one button necessarily, but there are some guys that do it with all their suits and it looks pretty good. So I may try it in the future. We'll just have to see. So uh, next question is, let's see. What is the preferred number of buttons on the sleeve of a jacket? So He's talking about this right here and how many buttons you have on here. This jacket has three. I just did three because I have a lot of jackets with four buttons. I have a lot with uh, five. And so the reason I, I personally think that you should go for five buttons because I just think it looks better. For example, if I just reach over here and grab something, um, this suit supply jacket, it's, uh, it's actually a five button. I don't know if you could see that very well, but there are five buttons there. So I just think that looks a lot better, in my opinion, uh, having, you know, five buttons as opposed to, you know, everything else. So uh, I, I definitely, this chair, whoa, the chair is being funny. So yeah, I definitely recommend that you do five buttons and I recommend that you do um, functional button sleeves. That's a big, that's a biggie for me because, um, I just think it looks better. You gotta have that little extra touch. And it's really a sign of great quality in a suit jacket is having those functional button sleeves. So I definitely recommend that uh, if you're in the market for a suit. Um, next thing we got here is, next question is, how do you feel about bird's eye suits? Do you think someone should have one? So. I think the bird's eye suit is actually just the fabric. I th I've seen a few pictures before. I think it looks good. I don't own anything with a bird's eye fabric, so I'm really not entirely sh too sure on how they look or feel. But if I just do a quick search, bird's eye suit, let's just see what it what they look like. Um, yeah, so not decent. It looks kind of basic. There's a little bit of texture in there, so. Really not the worst suit, but um, you know I prefer linens. I prefer wools. Uh, anything with a wool silk linen blend is going to be very nice to wear. Um, we also have, let's see. Okay, we just got through those ones over there. So in the comment section, oh, Barry, he also asked, do you think uh, it will survive or is it a trend? And he's talking about the belt that's on the suit jacket like we talked about earlier. In my opinion, I think that um, I think that that is a trend, and I don't think it's going to be something that's going to stick around forever. I think most guys they tend to go for, you know, the basics: two buttons, none of the extra four pockets up here, and all that extra stuff. Now, me personally, I prefer you know a pleated shoulder. I prefer um, side tabs. I prefer peak lapels. I just think they look a lot better than having you know, just that basic suit. Because a lot of the times, when you go and get stuff off the rack, it's gonna be cut very basic. And in my opinion, I don't think it looks as good. Let me know if you guys can hear me very well, how the audio sounds. Is it too high? Is it too low? Just let me know. But um, going back to that, I just think that, you know, when you shop off the rack, more specifically, it's important to, um, to make sure that what you're getting is something that's going to be versatile, that you're going to get a lot of wear out of, and that's going to be classic and something that's traditional. And so to me, that's going to be safe. It's going to be a two button. It's going to be a notch lapel in most guys' scenarios, but I prefer a peak lapel because I like the extra flash. And then also, audio is good. Thank you. Um, 
So, Jay, do you have any questions while we're on here? Um, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, when you're building your wardrobe, especially when you're first starting out, we just did a video on what to wear when you're first starting out. You want to make sure that you stick with the basics. So your first suit should really be a navy suit. It should be tailored. It should fit good. Preferably, it has a a three or three and a half inch lapel, uh, depending on the size of your chest. If you're a little bit smaller, you can go with something a little bit skinnier. But I do recommend having a uh, a suit that's going to be very decent and uh, make sure that the fit is good. So there was a few other questions over here on Instagram. Let me go to this account. Did I take a screenshot of that? Oh, dang it. Let's see. Where are those questions? Uh, let's see what we got here. So, oh, there's a question. So, uh, Oxford Central over on Instagram, he asked vintage or modern, and he was referring to clothing. So, perfect, weird word, but um, preferentially to me, I prefer modern clothing. I just think, you know, it's a little bit better, but I think that when you shop, when you're buying suits and you're building your wardrobe you buy stuff that's timeless so you really don't focus on you know is it vintage or modern i've seen some vintage stuff and the lapels on vintage stuff are, are very nice they're very large or very wide but you know going a little bit too wide can oftentimes make you look a little bit dated and make your suit look like it's something that's older than it really is so i always say stay away from those really kind of 70s trendy suits Stay away from anything in the 80s because a lot of the times those 80s jackets, they're big, they're boxy, they're baggy, and they don't fit well. So I recommend staying away from those. Uh, and then also um, just keep it simple. You know, look at what works and then get the basics. And then once you have your basics, you can start developing uh, some more fun items in your wardrobe and really start to do some different things. So another question we have here. Let's see. Would like to know if you are planning to do another episode on your Mustang. So, it's a great question. So, I've still got some things that I'm working out with it. The next video, I really plan on having it done. I don't know when we'll do that, but it's starting to get cooler outside. So, it'll probably be sometime next summer or next year. But um, the car is doing good. We recently just got it back running because it was having some problems. It turned out to be just the distributor. So, it was really a simple fix. But... Um, again, great car. There will be more videos to come with that. Kind of um, <clears throat> some things that I'm thinking for the, the the next projects on the car. I've definitely got to get the hood replaced. I've got the hood already in the garage, the new one. I just haven't gotten it on and got it painted yet. So we're going to do that. And then also um, another project that I want to do is lowering the car. And then we got to tint the windows. And then I think leather seats would be a great final addition to the Mustang. So those are just a few things that we're going to be changing here in the future. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on, fragrance that we're wearing tonight is Dolce & Gabbana. This is light blue. I'm going to put that over my face so that should be in focus. This is a powerhouse. It's nice, lightweight. Um, it doesn't perform as well as something else you know your more fall fragrances but i do think it's a very nice uh kind of marine flavored fragrance so definitely love that um i wanted to talk about this cologne i recently got it and it's funny because you know you, you really can't describe stuff without people smelling it especially colognes but this is dracar noir it's a it's an older fashioned cologne it's i believe from like 1982 so it's very old but um I got it from Walmart just to try it out. I hadn't, you know, uh, smelt it before, and I wanted to try it out on my skin and see how it smelt. Uh, a guy that I work with at the office, uh, he had it on, and it smelt great on him. But I really don't like it, so if you're looking for something that's good that I recommend, I don't recommend you this. Uh, because even though it is a manly scent, I just don't like the way it smells, and I'm going to be actually returning this because it just doesn't smell good. So that's something that I wanted to touch on. Um, what's up? <clears throat> Excuse me. What's up, Brandon? So Brandon asks or says, he says, let's see, 
Your suit jacket color works well with your skin. Thank you. I, that's why I love this fabric. Um, is that your suit from Bespoke Initiative? Yes, it is. It is fantastic. They nailed the fit this time. We had some some little things that I didn't like with the last jacket, um, but this jacket I absolutely love. People are probably, are probably going to say once I release the video, like, why did you buy a all linen suit? And um, you know, I wanted something lightweight. I wanted something that I could wear in the summertime. I run warm, so I'll actually probably be wearing this in the winter, in the fall, uh, as well, because I just, excuse me, I just love the fabric. I think it's lightweight. It's very breathable, very durable. They got the cut really good this time. The shape of the body is perfect. I think the arms are great. Only thing I change with the arms for the next suit is maybe making them a tad bit wider. Uh, just off of preference, I just think it would look a little bit better if. And I'd have frequently I'd have more room because you know it is kind of not as roomy as the the last jacket or other jackets that I have. So I do though. <coughs> I put this the fit of this suit up against like suit supply. I'd put it up against Indochino. I think it actually beats Indochino. Uh, it's right up there with suit supply as far as quality. One video that I've got that's going to be coming up here shortly in a couple of weeks, or actually probably about a month or so, is going to be a video on um, kind of like a suit roundup video. If you remember a few years ago, <clears throat> we did one with Hawkerty. We did one with or the video featured Hawkerty, Suit Supply, Indochino, Spear and McKay, and I think maybe another brand or two. And so this year we're going to add Bespoke Initiative into the mix of things. We're going to throw in a few other brands. Uh, I've actually got a made-to-measure suit from Spear and McKay that's coming in the mail. So that'll be probably two videos off of that. We'll do the roundup video, and then we'll also feature the jacket with, um, what's it called? The uh, We've got Indochino suit supply just new suits that i've got recently and we've dialed in the measurements with a lot of the brands and so we'll start talking about those in the future um let's see what we got here let's see any more questions in the comment section bring the con the questions on i'm going to answer all of them tonight but um yeah i really i really enjoy this suit i think it fits great i've got a pinstripe suit over there I've actually got two of those and that's going to be one of the next videos it's going to feature um, it's going to feature it's going to be a pinstripe suit video so I'm going to teach you guys how to style pinstripe suits and basically go over what I would do with a pinstripe suit I've got two of them one is from Spear McKay or not Spear McKay but suit supply and the other one is for Indochino so it's only really going to be about the Indochino one because it, it, it's just a really nice quality suit. So we're going to talk about that. What are the deets on the Spirit McKay suit? So uh, it's a live stream. We'll go ahead and get into it. So <clears throat> for that suit, the fabric that I decided to go with, I think we're going to keep that part of mystery on what I decided to choose. And also we've got, let's see, okay, it just something popped up here. Okay, excellent stream status. So we've got some um, really cool stuff with that suit supply suit. So I'm kind of going to see what they sent because I made some, some interesting requests. I requested uh, pleated shoulders on their peak lapel jacket. Typically when you order stuff from, typically when you order stuff from Spear McKay's Made to Measure program, they don't have as many options as say suit supply or Indochino or you know Oliver Wicks and so um, with the suit basically of course we did peak lapels they're like three and a half inches we did a pleated shoulder hopefully they did they actually put that on the suit I did four or five buttons on the sleeves I believe I did four because that's all they have um, I think the pants are pleated and I think I did a double reverse pleat Yes, because I wouldn't do forward pleats. I'm not a fan of those. I think they just, they don't look right, especially on my body. And so, uh, says video is private. Is that true? Let's see. That should be public. Let's see. Someone just texted me and said the video was private. No, it's public. Okay. Someone just texted me and said... Let's see.
yeah so the suit really nice it has a lot of great features um we'll just go ahead and you know get into the fabric so i did a plaid suit it's a brown plaid suit i've been on a brown suit kick lately uh it's going to be very cool very bold it's going to be something that is a showstopper in my opinion uh not a fan of their sports coats i just think sports coats don't make sense and you know i i got some hate over that video because uh sports coats in my opinion they're they're kind of a waste of money if you really think about it a lot of the brands in my opinion they charge you know say if a suit is six hundred dollars the jacket will be five hundred dollars for just the sports coat and yeah the, i guess the fabric is fancier or the fabric is different but to me i just don't think it looks right uh to be buying a suit you know for 600 and the jacket is 500 i just don't think that makes sense i think you're better off getting a suit so that you have the pants i just think that that is uh, going to be a better option in the long run you know as far as maximizing the value that you're actually getting from the items and what you're, you're you're looking for in your wardrobe so i uh, got some really cool shoes in the mail today and these are from thrifted gent who you may follow on instagram he sent me these beautiful um these are like a tassel loafer i believe is what what it's called but the brand is and here i'll take the shoe tree out the brand is as you could see right there should be in focus. I don't know if you can see that, but that says Polo. The brand is Polo by Ralph Lauren. These are a fantastic looking shoe. I absolutely love the way they look and I'm glad that they came in. So one thing, one thing I want to say about these. So these are actually, they're Goodyear Weld down at the bottom. So I'll actually be able to resole these in the future if I want to. Um, but I did some research on these and these are a $500 pair of shoe on the Ralph Lauren website. He did a little bit of shining in the front originally, and then I also re-shined them today, but uh, definitely one of the nicer shoes that I have in my wardrobe. Um, let's see, so that's, that's those. Really glad to have these. They're calfskin leather, and when I tell you they feel good, they really feel good. They feel good on my feet, and also just holding them. They're very solid, they're very sturdy because a lot of the times, you know, you go to brands and you get the shoes and the leather feels cheap and you really, you know, can tell the difference in the quality. So that's uh, those pair of polo shoes that I think are very nice. And I could see why they originally were 500 bucks. Um, get JR soles on those loafers. That I think that's a great idea. I think that will look good. So that, that actually may be something... Um, something that we do here in the future what's up don so don says let's see he says <clears throat> should i get should i get measured for a suit now or lose some weight to motivate me to keep the weight off so that's a great question um let's see want need a new suit so yeah in my opinion don i think you should just go ahead and get a suit because if we're going to be real, and this is what a lot of guys say, a lot of guys say, oh, well, you know, I could just, I'll just wait till I, you know, lose weight or whatever. Most guys, they say that and they don't actually do it. So, um, that's your motivation, me saying that. But, um, I think you should just go ahead and get it now because you can, you can definitely tailor stuff in and the main measurements of your body never really change. So the width of your shoulder, usually the width of your chest is not going to change that often once you're an adult. So, I'd say go ahead and get it now. You can always take in like the actual waist of the jacket to make it more slimmer and they leave the fabric in and let that out uh, if you get bigger in the future. Like for example, I've got jackets where they're kind of getting starting to get tight and so I can let out the fabric in the future if that's something that I wanted to do. But um, I definitely say buy it now. Make sure that there's a fabric allowance in there in case you gain or lose weight. Um, but in most cases, most guys don't gain enough weight to really change the, the look of the suit. Like, for example, you know, my arms probably are not going to get any bigger than this, even if I don't exercise or whatever. Most guys, you typically stay around that same weight unless you're growing. I wouldn't recommend for a guy that's, you know, um, 
I wouldn't recommend it for a guy that is, uh, you know, in high school or middle school. I wouldn't say to, I wouldn't say to uh, to get like a custom suit then because you know you're still growing and you don't know how big you're going to get. But uh, most guys aren't going to pick up a lot of weight, and a lot of guys aren't going to lose a whole bunch of weight either. So I'd say go ahead and get the suit. I think you need one because you're the man, and I just think that uh, that that will look really good. So uh, get Jr. Get Jr. Soles on the shoes, definitely. But but here's my thing: I don't like resoling shoes um, until like there's a hole in them. You know, I'll really wear them out until I actually go and get them resold. But that's definitely a consideration. So Brandon, he also says, let's see, he's got on here for me. Taylor tailored menswear has become highly addictive. Just wondering how you manage it all. I'm always buying new bespoke suits and shoes. It becomes a very expensive hobby. So, yeah, Brandon, um, definitely I agree with that 100%. This is a very expensive hobby. As I sit in here and I look at, you know, around $7,000 worth of suits and probably around 1000 bucks worth of shoes and, you know, another four or 500 bucks worth of shirts, it's definitely expensive. Um for me, though, you know, I really don't worry about, you know, buying too much or whatever. I just I just budget in, you know, suits and clothing. Uh, when I can get stuff like this at a good deal, I always jump on it. This, this suit was a great deal. I got a great deal on the price. Um, and that's, that's really another reason why I wanted to buy a suit from them is because the first suit that we did with the partnership... Uh, was like $3,800 suit. So it's very expensive, but they also offer stuff in that $600 range like this suit. And so um, we'll be touching on that more in the video once we film that. But um, it definitely, menswear is a very addictive hobby and uh, it's not for everybody, you know. But you really, you can, nowadays, especially with the internet, you can build a really nice wardrobe for a really decent price. I've seen, um, <coughs> excuse me, I've seen some guys that have really nice suits, all that kind of stuff. They're vintage, they're, they're older suits, but they still kind of have a modern sensibility to them, and so they look really good. But I definitely would say, you know, go in, uh, go to your Goodwills if you're on a budget, go to your, your, um, your K&G fashions, even though I don't recommend you get suits from them anymore. Uh, but it is a good store if you're starting out. Just test the waters first. Make sure you get the basics. And once you have the basics, once you have that navy suit, some guys would say a black tassel loafer or brown, or not a brown black tassel loafer, but a black cap toe Oxford. Other guys would say a brown cap toe Oxford, even though I don't recommend you get a cap toe Oxford. I just don't think they're good shoes. I think they're basic. Um, but once you get those basics, you're going to be good. You really don't need you know, 50 suits unless you're like a Wall Street banker or, you know, the CEO of a company that you really got to look good and presentable all the time. You're not going to need uh, all of that. But for me personally, I love style. It's a passion of mine. It's a hobby. I love doing these videos. And so I will always be investing in new suits, even when I don't really need new suits, because that's just the way it is with this channel. So do we have any more questions? We've been on here for 34 minutes. Um, watch that I was wearing earlier today, but I didn't have it on. Currently, this is a very vintage Seiko. It is from 1981, I believe, is the year. It's very thin, very nice, uh, old gold watch. That's what I had on earlier as far as that. Um, pocket square that we've got on with this. <coughs> Excuse me. It's just a basic silk pocket square. Uh, no fancy fold. We just take this and we just throw that in there like that. Let it hang. You know, some guys think this looks messy or whatever, but, you know, I, I, I love just a little bit of, uh, you know, pocket square flare. I just think it looks good. So let's see. Any chance you do a live bourbon tasting? I bet some local places would sponsor. I think that's a great idea. I've uh, wanted to do something with a cigar lounge, so we may do cigar and bourbon. Uh, I think that would actually be a good segment to do on a live stream. Um, so we'll, we'll definitely be working on that here soon. 
But yes, definitely with the cigars, I know that because uh, I just love cigars. I thought about smoking one tonight, but I uh, didn't want to do so. But um, let's see if we have any other questions over on here. Let's see. We done do not. Oh, let's see. What's that? Let me check this really quick. <clears throat> okay, so... <clears throat> Let's see. Anton, what do you want to see? Can you make more content? I enjoy your videos. Shoot shoot me some ideas. Uh, we do one a week currently with the live stream. Um, let's see. Jay also asked, do you have a work you have a regular workout regimen? So it's a great question. I've actually been slacking lately. Uh, before the pandemic, I was like 150 pounds. Now I'm like 173, so I'm down three pounds. I looked in the, the or I got on the scale a few days ago or a few weeks ago, and it, this that 176 number threw me off. You know, I'm five seven. I don't want to be fat per se, and I want to make sure that I stay in all my clothes. So um, I'm working on just getting back in shape, getting back a, a little bit leaner than you know what I am currently. This is the biggest I've ever been. But um, yeah, I definitely need a better workout regimen. I really, I'm simple. I do the elliptical like five days a week for like 30, 30 minutes when I was having a regimen uh, and then do weights the other two days. But um, I don't want to be like that guy, like that big strong guy. I just want to stay lean and be able to fit all of my clothes. So as far as the, uh, the workout regimen, that's really all there is to that. Uh, I really don't have a set regimen. So Let's see, what else do we have as far as questions? So the shine the shine that's on here on these shoes, it's just a light mirror shine that I tried to do. Um, you can see the, the, the reflection in the shoe and the tip. I don't ever do the back of shoes because I just don't think it is really warranted, especially for loafers. Um, but these are really high quality, you know, Goodyear weld on the sole. Definitely something that's pretty nice. So let's see what we got here. <clears throat> See if there's anything I missed. Um, let me check over here. Let's see what we got. Probably should have got some more questions. Oh, there's some more questions. Great questions coming in, guys. Keep them rolling in. So we've also got a question here. <clears throat> uh, do you ever think about owning your own menswear store? Um... You know, I, I like clothing. I like buying stuff. I like trying different brands. But I feel like if I um, if I owned my own store, I think that maybe throw off the actual videos, you know, as far as what I wear in them. Because uh, I probably want to wear only my stuff. And so um, that may be something that we do down the line, you know, launch a line of suits or launch, you know, my own store. I think that that could be be something pretty fun. Just we're going to focus on the videos for now. So links, he also says, any suggestions for our taller guys over six foot? Where to get good deals on trousers and suits? So, <clears throat> yeah, so for, for my guys uh, over six foot, um, I've never really thought about this, but, you know, you really want to stick with the basics. You know, make sure that things are tailored, make sure that they fit, that they're tapered. Uh, a good deal on trousers. I'd say check out the Slim Fit from Spear McKay. Great deal on suits. Um, I'd say for suits, really, you know, if, if you're really tall, say if you're like 6'6 or whatever, I'd say just go custom because anything you get off the rack from a store is really going to be uh, too short in my opinion or it's going to be really baggy and need a whole lot of tailoring. So that's definitely a challenge that a lot of really tall guys face. And I think a lot of those problems are circumvented by doing made-to-measure. Indochino, Suit Supply, Spear McKay, uh, Oliver Wicks, all of these, um, all of these different, you know, brands uh, are going to be what's better suited for the guys that are taller. Um, let's see what we got here. What's what's next? So I hope I answered your question, Lynx. Um, great deal. So a good deal to look out for, I think, is. Um, to make sure 
And I don't know when it's going to happen, but I think Spear McKay is going to do another sale around Black Friday. Or not Spear McKay, but Suit Supply, where they have their like closeout sale for the year. That's a great place to look for suits. Wish I would have picked up more at the last sale. And I'll do a video on that once the time is, uh, is once that is announced, I will be doing a video on that, letting people know to go buy as much as they can. That's one of my regrets from last year is not buying everything that I saw in that store because the suits were literally, they were $175 for the normal price suit supply stuff. And it was a really good deal. I only got one suit, a couple of jackets, but um, stay on the lookout for that. Anton, I think I enjoy the videos that show different outfit ideas. Maybe a video on how to style black shoes. You know, I actually have quite a few of black shoes. So that's actually a good idea. I'm going to screenshot this comment because that is uh, that's a really good, good idea. So thanks for that, Anton. Um, different colors of shoes. Yeah, we can do something like that. I've actually got a video just on monk straps coming out here soon that you guys will be able to see in the next couple of weeks. Uh, maybe videos about fitting different body types. I like that topic too. Um, I think similar rules apply, but there's going to be different rules, of course. You know, say if you're a bigger guy, you want to focus on not wearing stuff that's going to be super slim. I recommend for bigger guys to stick with, you know, fuller cut suits and fuller cut items. Have it roomy enough, but where, you know, it doesn't look like it's tight like it would fit a kid. I don't recommend trying to do like a really tapered leg and you're like if say if you're 5 10 300 pounds you don't want to wear a really tapered le uh, leg because it's not going to look right so <clears throat> let's see uh love anton suggestions yes we will be getting to those cover some style trends of the 70s 80s and 90s that'll be that could be a fun video too uh that we do Especially with the 70s, because I, I like a lot of the stuff that they wore in the 70s. I wouldn't wear a lot of the stuff, but there's stuff, again, that I do think looks good. Especially like leisure suits. Um, I don't own a leisure suit, but if I could find one, I think that that would be something really cool to have. Uh, we've also got here... Anton also suggested to do more grooming videos. That's also a great topic. We can do it. definitely make that happen. Uh... The grooming videos. It's been a while since I did one of those. But yeah, I'll do something. I'll throw something together with a few tips. Some of the products that I use. Um, yeah, because grooming, grooming is really important. You know, you can have on a $10,000 suit, a $500 shirt, a pair of $1,000 George Cleverly bespoke shoes. You can have on, you know, a gold Rolex but if your hair is not kept, if your, your facial hair looks bad, if you got bags under your eyes, if you smell bad, it's really not going to do you any good. So you got to do things like, of course, showering. Uh, <laughs> and then also wearing, you know, cologne. Again, fragrance of the night is uh, Light Blue Intense by Dolce & Gabbana. Um, so yeah, you know, include that stuff in your grooming regimen. I'll definitely be doing that video here soon. Um, Let's see, the Husey style, we're going to do a live, is there, let's see, I noticed on internet there's a lack of content and other platforms on how to style a light gray suit, so I've actually got a light gray suit, I think I did a video on it a while back, um, Light gray suits, I don't know what, how I feel about them. I prefer darker gray suits, but the one that I have, I actually tried to sell it, and the person returned it because they, I guess they just didn't like it. Um, I can't seem to get rid of that suit, but it's from Spear McKay. It's a great suit, but I just, I just don't like the color, and it's also got notch lapels, and I want something with peak lapels. So if I do, um, if I do do a video on a light gray suit, it'll be something custom that has a pleated shoulder, Something like this with the peak lapel, uh, three roll two, side tabs, it'll be great. But uh, the Husey style got a pinstripe suit from Suit Supply Sale last season. It was $200. Great price. I actually have a Suit Supply pinstripe suit uh, that I got for 60 bucks on eBay. So uh, again, great deal. eBay, I think, is the best place to go and get um, different items because... You know, that guy that sold me that suit, the pants were ripped in the back, 
but it was a rip along the seam, and so I was able to repair it with my sewing machine. And he didn't know what he was giving up. He was giving up probably a $400 suit over a little bitty tear in the butt. So I fixed that, and a uh, really great suit. So <clears throat> let's see. Lynx also commented, maybe a fall slash winter video, outerwear video. We can do that. I've got some, I've actually got a lot of outerwear pieces for the fall and winter. So we'll definitely be doing something with that. Uh, another thing I want to show you guys real quick. I got two of these a few days ago, and I have a whole collection of these. But uh, these are these are really cool. These are um, just some really nice suits, or not suits, but um, these are really nice vintage sweaters. If you if you look at that, I'm just gonna hold that up there so you can see it. That is Kuji. I don't know if you can see that, but again, real sweater, very nice. Kind of like an old Cosby sweater, but I just love the way that these look. Uh, I think that these are a really cool item to have in the wardrobe. And then we've also got this one. This one's from Tundra. And I'll actually, I'll probably do a video on these and how to style them, but this is, this is a really nice one as well. So, um... About to be the fresh prince with the sweaters. That that's funny. Uh, I love those those Kuji sweaters. I wear them when it's warm. They're a great item in my opinion. I think they're you know a tad overlooked, especially in today's age. But you know if you could find those for a good price, they're kind of hard to find. So they're usually like six hundred bucks. But I got both of those. The Kuji was sixty and the Tundra was thirty. So I got a good deal on them. I always get good deals on stuff. But um. Back to the question because I got sidetracked. We will be doing a outerwear video later on this year when it gets a little bit warmer. We'll actually go outside. Also recommend in the wintertime a nice pair of leather gloves. Very underrated item to cover your hands that are stylish versus those just knitted wool gloves. I just don't think those are, you know, the greatest option. Let's see. <clears throat> Style over 60. What is up, dude? We got... Uh, a great question from him. He asks, <clears throat> "What in what what inspired what inspired you, and why is your motivation for men's wear? What is your oh my gosh, I'm a horrible reader." He says, "What inspired you, and what is your motivation for men's fashion and style?" Great question. If I'm being honest with you. Um, <clears throat> I have always loved, I got a piece of fur in my mouth, um, I've always loved dressing nice. Even as a kid, it's been something that I've always uh, paid attention to and wanted to do. And so when we were little, when I was, um, you know, five or six, my grandmother, you know, when she got us, she would dress us up the same and we'd have like matching outfits, me and my brother Rylan. And, um, I've always liked style, especially smelling good has always been something that I've liked. We wore good cologne in like kindergarten, and so people noticed that, uh, especially like the teachers. But I've always made sure I smelled good and looked good. Um, kind of what motivated me to start the channel, I'd been watching all these guys doing the style videos, and I was like, you know what? No one's done a channel dedicated to the affordable lens or the, the affordable way of building a nice classic menswear wardrobe and so that's why I wanted to start the channel because I saw a, a void missing there with doing style videos that were for guys that weren't say on a budget and so the channel started off you know I was young in college and high school or whatever and didn't have a whole lot of money when I was doing the the first videos and I still don't have a whole lot now but doing better than I used to uh, but Basically, I saw that need and the first couple of videos, maybe the first 100 or so, were just like how to shop on a budget, going thrifting, going to Goodwill, getting you know stuff from K&G Fashion, all affordable stuff. But then I kind of realized there's really a cap on the, the amount of quality <clears throat> that you're going to get with, you know... Uh, stuff that's that's you know cheaper made and of poorer quality and that's really affordable and so that's why I kind of started getting into excuse me really started getting into kind of more of like the higher end stuff even though Spear McKay suits still run 
you know, two to six hundred bucks. Uh, suit supply is usually around six hundred bucks for a suit. Indochino is usually around three or four hundred bucks because they always have a sale going on. So I've kind of stepped up a little bit as opposed to buying those, you know, ten dollar, fifteen dollar suits from Goodwill and from getting the hundred dollar suits from KG Fashion and moving up towards you know, made to measure brands that are going to serve and do a lot better for you in the long run and give you a, a really significant jump. That $100 suit from Men's Warehouse is, it's going to be a decent suit. You're going to have to spend a lot on tailoring. Oftentimes, that off the rack suit from Macy's is going to need more tailoring than what the suit actually costs. And so, in that case, it makes more sense for you guys to just go and get. A custom suit because for that same price as the off the rack suit with all the tailoring you can get a suit from say men's warehouse or uh, or not men's warehouse but from indochino or suit supply or bespoke initiative all those places are going to have a made to measure suit that's going to better suit your needs and it's going to last you a lot longer be higher quality better materials and customizations is a big thing because you know a lot of guys really don't focus on the details and that's where a lot of guys mess up especially like here in indiana if you walk around in indiana you're going to notice especially all the guys out in public even at events where you're supposed to dress up they don't dress nice they don't look good um they look sloppy oftentimes and so really the guys that focus on their appearance their image their style they get better outcomes in every element of their life that's just Something that I've learned from my experience when I dress and wear a suit out in public versus wearing, you know, uh, just a, a t-shirt and jeans, there's definitely a difference in the way that people treat me and the way that, you know, people see me. So image is important. It's a super important part of, you know, your life and the decisions that you make. You want to make sure that you're carrying yourself in a way where people won't forget you and that people will always like you and think highly of you. Um, I don't like to brag on myself, but I always try to do something or say something or just carry myself in a, a way that's going to be more so presentable and uh, a way that's really not forgettable. I, I've really never met a person and then seen them years later and they don't remember my name or who I am or what I do. So, you know, putting that positive impact is really something that's going to, you know, better um, better the the outcome that you're going to receive in life. And you're going to have haters, of course. Um, there's people where, you know, they see me in a suit. I once worked a job, I'm not going to say where and what I was doing, but they, are, they one person asked me, like, are you gay? Like, th these are just questions you're going to get when you take pride in your appearance but it's really worth it just don't listen to the haters dress nice and look at the changes that you're going to see in your life so um that was a really good segment i think uh, i might take that and make a clip out of that but um so style over 60 i hope that answered your question uh links he said facts definitely you know the way you dress the way you carry yourself People are going to take note of that. They're going to treat you better. The Husey style in the comment section, Barry, he said, whenever I dress well, I notice people people defer to me as, um, as sir. They call him sir by default. And that's true. If you wear a suit in the airport when you're getting on a plane, they might upgrade you. If you wear a suit in a restaurant, they're going to sit you in the nice laid back area because they're going to think you're important like if you walk in there'll be times where i go in places with a nice suit on and they say man who is that guy like what what do you do for a living that's another fun question that they give me is what do you do for a living when i dress nice um yeah so definitely one 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 thing i do say is you know I tend to dress nicer in the fall and winter just out and about because it's easier to stay warm when you're wearing a full suit so um Jorg, what's up, Jorg? I is it Jorg or Jorge? I don't is that I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry if I messed it up. But uh he has a comment here. Any suggestions, any suggestions to start a dress shoe collection? So <clears throat> Jorg uh Jorge, sorry if I'm not pronouncing it right, but basically uh as far as starting a dress shoe collection, 
Most guys are going to tell you, most of the other people on here, they're going to say, get yourself a black cap toe Oxford, get yourself a brown black cap toe Oxford, get yourself a wing tip. They're going to say, get a loafer. Um, I get called both, but no worries. Okay, thank you. So um, I think it's Jorge, so I'm going to go with Jorge. But um, I'd say for me personally, if I'm giving you just some tips, and let me check my audio levels because I'm getting kind of loud. Okay, it looks good. So I'd say your first dress shoe should be a brown monk strap with a wingtip at the end. That's what I recommend, or a cap toe at the end. Slight broguing, I think is going to look great. Your next shoe, your second shoe, I think should be a tassel loafer. This is a tassel loafer. It's got these little things right here. Um, I just love the design of these. I think they're a great shoe. As far as the color, I'd say do a brown, a little bit like kind of like this or a little bit darker. That monk strap should be a dark brown color. Don't get something really light. Uh, the next shoe that I'd say to get is, let me look and look back there and see what I got. Um, <clears throat> so I'd say the next shoe, do a cap toe Oscar with broguing at the tip. And then after that, you can do just like a wing tip and really whatever you want after that. You can start, you know, getting into fun, like things like this, which is just, you know, a really basic loafer, um, that has a good look to it. Very sleek, minimal design. This is from Zara. <clears throat> <clears throat> JT says thoughts on ties silk or cashmere preferred material so J JT um, ooh that fell I personally prefer let's see I, I always go with silk ties all of my ties are silk some of them are just like cheap polyester ties I'd say get those too if they look good but I do I do would say just stay away from um stay away from those really what's it called stay away from those really um how do i say the really shiny ties you don't want to wear stuff that's really shiny because you know it's not going to look as good as something that has you know a a simple minimal uh hue to it so definitely check out uh a silk tie. I've never had a cashmere tie. I just, I don't have a tie that expensive. My thing with ties is, is I don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a tie. I want to get ties from Goodwill. Um, I want to get ties from, you know, k g Fashion. They have nice looking ties. I don't, I don't prefer, um, I don't, I, I just don't prefer expensive ties. So, Silk ties dimple the best. Yes, they do. Uh, they dimple the best, and I just think they look better. I think the knots turn out better. They definitely, they definitely turn out better than, you know, polyester ties, especially. But uh, those are just a few things I'd say as far as that. Starting to get hoarse. Oh, we're at an hour, so we're starting to get towards the end of the live stream. Uh, let's see what we got here. We've got. Style over 60, he says, appreciate your answer. That's my approach to menswear fashion also. Yeah, you, 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 it's very simple. You got to make sure that the items that you're getting are versatile, that they fit well, the tailoring's got to be right. Make sure that you're buying quality and not crap. You want to buy real materials as opposed to synthetic materials. You want to make sure that you buy stuff that's going to be timeless and last you for a lifetime. And you also want to make sure that... Uh, that you, you know, carry yourself because that's really the most important part. You can kind of look any way you want, but actually I'm not going to say that. You really should look presentable at all times because, you know, people, they do judge. That's a big thing that I talk about on the channel is wherever you go, whatever you do in life, people are going to judge you based upon how you look. And so <clears throat> how you look is important and also the way you carry yourself um, let's see, let's see what we got here, Jorge, he also says Burlington Marshalls and TJ Maxx have nice designer ties for six to eight bucks, yeah, I've gotten ties out of Burlington, I've gotten ties out of Marshalls, haven't gotten anything out of TJ Maxx, but, um, 
yeah, those are those are good places. I don't think you should spend more than six or eight dollars on a tie. Those custom hundred dollar ties or just off the rack ties for a hundred bucks. I don't think it's worth it. Now, I did one time splurge on a tie. I have a tie from Suit Supply that I paid uh, seventy nine dollars for. It was it's my most expensive tie. It's worth more than all my other ties combined. But it's this sand tie. I'll probably wear it with this one day. But it just looks amazing. Great live stream. Keep them coming. Definitely have a guest next time. We'll probably have a couple of guests. I want to get uh, Barry on here. Uh, cigar lounge location. Yeah, we'll we'll consider that as well. Thanks for the information. Really enjoy this channel. Thanks, JT. Uh, another thing we got here is from Lynx, and he says, "Any suggestions on affordable shoes? Affordable custom shoes? I know, I know, affordable custom shoes sound like an oxymoron. LOL. So, yeah, really, you know, uh, you're not going to get a custom shoe for a hundred bucks." That's going to be good quality. I know Hawkerty, they just launched their custom suit system or custom shoe system. I've yet to try it out. Uh, I really don't have any interest in the idea of custom shoes. I have a pair from Bespoke Initiative that are custom. Those were seven, I think they were six or seven hundred bucks, is what they sell them for. So those are kind of pricey. But you know, really with a custom shoe, if you're going to be up in that, up in that, that uh, price range, I'd say make sure to, um, just get a bespoke shoe. You know, if you're going to spend 600 bucks on a shoe, go ahead and spend 1400 and get a bespoke shoe. That's just my opinion. I think it makes more sense. <clears throat> Jorge says, bro, thanks for the advice on dress shoes. Any brands that you'd recommend? I was looking into Cole Haan. So Cole Haan used to make a really good shoe back in like the 80s and 90s. You can occasionally find those at Goodwill. They usually have, you know, a Goodyear sole on the bottom. Um... Mm -hmm. Brands that I recommend, of course, like you could do something like what I got on today. <clears throat> These are a pair of Allen Edmonds. These are some of my favorite loafers from them. Um, great shoes by Allen, or not Allen Flusser, but Allen Edmonds makes a great dress shoe. Uh, Meslon is another brand. They're a little bit more expensive. Or they're actually, they're probably around that range of the shoes from... From Allen Edmonds, if you were to buy one online, they're around the range of three to four hundred dollars. There's also, let's see, <clears throat> another good brand would be Magnani, which is a brand that I swear by. They have a very slim looking shoe, so you'll have to try them on first before you buy them. I don't recommend just buying them blindly because uh, they're very slim shoes, and so they may be hard for you to get into. Uh, JT says, I like Thursday Boot Company. Thursday Boot is also amazing. They have some really good shoes. I brought my brother a pair of those for uh, Christmas last year, and he likes those. They polish really good, and they, they're just a great quality shoe. Goodyear Weld or Blake Stitch, one of the two. Magnani, those shoes are Blake Stitch as well. Um, another brand you could consider that makes a solid shoe. I don't own a pair, but my brother recently picked up two pair of shoes from Beckett Seminon. And I'm thinking about actually doing a review here on the channel of that brand. Uh, those shoes are very nice quality. The leather on those is very good. It, it feels just like these. Very solid. You can tell when the leather is uh, is really cheap. Um, but, you know, these are not cheap. And some of the other the brands that I mentioned don't have cheap leather. Nowadays, if you go to DSW, which is a, which is a great... Or not a... I don't think it's a great store. If you go to DSW... I'd say stay away from their dress shoes because they're usually not real leather. And if they are a leather, they're genuine leather. Stay away from genuine leather shoes because they're really not genuine leather. They, they're mixed with something um, or they're like a, 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 a synthetic material. So stay away from those. Let's see. We also have here, I've seen a lot of Magnani and Nordstrom Rack. Check on eBay. They, they're usually a little bit nicer on eBay. You actually get the real ones from the store. Uh, nice shoes and discounted. Yeah, they are. They're really good shoes. Very slim. Some people think they look like they're really pointy, but in my opinion, I think that's the best looking dress shoe. Very Italian in its styling. Um, speaking of Italians and style, I think that Italian suiting is a better way to go versus British or American. I just think it looks a lot better. Um, 
Grant Stone dress shoes. So I've actually never tried Grant Stone dress shoes, but I will do so in the future. Um, yeah, I'm really not familiar with that brand. I, I've not tried them yet. So, well, guys, that is it for the live stream. I'm getting sleepy, and my voice is starting to go away. And so we will do this probably next week. I enjoy these live streams. Again, we're going to bring on some guests. I'm going to try to line up some guests for the next show if I can figure out how to get that on here but i should be able to so um we'll stay on here for about four more minutes or a couple more minutes and see uh if you guys have any final questions go ahead and let me know now so that i can get to those uh let's see what we got here okay we don't have any on instagram currently let's see <clears throat> Check the actual post. Okay, there's nothing there. Okay, well, I don't see any more questions on the chat in the live stream. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you're new to the channel or watching this after, please be sure to hit the like button. Also, go ahead and subscribe and share. I'm Robert. This is Gent Style, and I'll see you in the next live stream. This isn't a video. So, oh, okay, one one last question. Jorg, Jorge, he asked, where'd you get the suit? It's Bespoke Initiative. Video will be coming on that soon. So, Thank you guys. Like, subscribe, and share if you're watching after, and I will see you in the next live stream.